I hope you are still doing well even at this time of pandemic. Hopefully, you will take this opportunity to continue learning at home. For today, let me introduce to you what this subject is all about. First, let's look at our objectives for this lecture. So, we will review the, some of the physics concepts and concepts that you learned from your statics. We will also go through with the different branches of dynamics. And I will also introduce the preliminary assessment to help you in the future in solving dynamic problems. And we will emphasize the difference between scalar and vector to, av to avoid confusion in handling the formulas in the future. Now, let's recap your knowledge from your previous mechanics. As you can see, mechanics is classified into three. Namely, from the left, mechanics of deformable bodies which contains your uh, advanced subject strength of materials. The other two subjects are very advanced and are typically offered in master's degree. Now, on the right, we have fluid mechanics which is also an advanced undergrad course to be taken during or after statics. On the middle belongs our subject. In this classification, mechanics of rigid bodies, we will not consider any change in, sh in size or shape due to applied forces, same as how you treat problems during your statics. As you can observe, mechanics of rigid bodies is divided into two areas, statics and dynamics. For this semester, we will explore about the dynamic aspect of mechanics. From this illustration, let's highlight dynamics and take a closer look. We can see here that dynamics is divided into two areas, kinematics and kinetics. Then each area is further divided into two specific focus, namely particle and rigid body. For sure, you have already encountered kinematics and kinetics during your physics course and have solved some problems applying these two areas of dynamics. But as a quick review, let's refresh your understanding again about everything here in the figure that is under dynamics. Let's start with what is dynamics and its two areas, kinematics and kinetics. Dynamics is simply the study of bodies in motion. In fact, we experience dynamics from time to time in real life. And actually, it will be very hard to imagine our everyday life without motion. Indeed, dynamics is very fundamental for us engineers to solve real life problems, whether in particular industry or in our community. One of the areas in dynamics is kinematics, which is the study of the ge geometry of motion without reference to what causes the motion. Kinematics is used to describe the motion of the body, whether it is moving, accelerating, or covering a specific travel distance. Examples are falling bodies and simple rectilinear motion of a car traversing a particular distance at a certain speed or acceleration. The other area of dynamics is kinetics, which, con which considers what causes the motion in order to analyze the motion, whether, whether it is due to physically applied force or due to magnetic attraction or other causes. Examples are pulling of string to fire an arrow and the spectacular yo-yo performance due to varying tension applied to the thread. Lastly, in this figure, 
each area covers two different idealizations of body, namely particle and rigid body. In your previous course in mechanics, you have surely spent a lot of time doing static analysis for a particle and for a rigid body. Well, let's shortly review what they are as you will frequently encounter them in this subject. So idealization, idealization in mechanics simply means assumptions that are used to simplify the analysis of the problem without significantly affecting the result. One of those idealizations is the particle that when we say as particle, we mean an entity having considerable mass but negligible dimension. The next idealization is rigid body. And then when we talk about rigid body, we mean a solid or undeformable body having considerable mass as well as dimension. It is a, actually a combination of large number of particles. Considering a particle can be relative, let's consider or let's focus on this example. In here, the satellite can be analyzed as particle to investigate its motion because relatively, the size of the satellite is negligible compared to our planet. Another example is a vehicle traveling from one point to another. Here, the vehicle can be analyzed as particle if the distance that it will tra travel is too large compared to its size. Now for rigid body, let's consider this structural beam of a building. As you can notice, downward forces are spread all throughout its length, which means that the dimension of this body should be taken into account to investigate its motion. Also, you can notice that the beam experiences a slight deflection due to the applied load. However, even with this slight deflection, the beam can still be analyzed as rigid body because the deformation is too small that it can be neglected. In real life, engineers, not only civil engineers, follow a national code where it can base its decision whether a particular deformation or deflection is tolerable. Please take note, the definition of what is rigid body is only a hypothetical concept. Actually, no object or body is perfectly rigid in the universe. An assumption of rigid body is only made to simplify the analysis, especially on cases where the actual deformation is negligible. So now another example is the spinning tire. We can consider the tire as rigid body since the deformation can be very small or neglected. So remember always in this subject, we will only deal with objects that can be idealized as either particle or rigid body. To have some in initial background right now, on how these idealizations will be applied during problem solving, let's take note of the following example. You can see in this figure that a 100 Newton object is hung with the use of cable wires and pulley. In this case, you can idealize the pulley as a particle by drawing it like a dot at point A and then drawing the applied forces on the particle. Now for rigid body, this is an example. The system in the following figure containing or the figure contains cable wires, a vase, and a rod OA. And in here, the rod OA can be idealized as rigid body by just drawing the rod and the forces only. In mechanics, it is not only bodies that can be idealized to simplify the analysis. Reaction forces and applied forces exerted by a body to another body can also be idealized as either 
concentrated or distributed forces. The first example shows a man standing on a plank. When analyzing the forces exerted on the plank, you may idealize the weight of the man as concentrated force or purely acting on a particular point on the plank. This assumption simplifies the computation that might involve calculating the total area of the contact of his, of his feet to the plank just to include the concept of pressure. Another similar example is this truck passing on a bridge. The weight of the truck is idealized by these concentrated forces acting on the center of gravity of the truck and on the points of contact between the tires and the bridge. This assumption is also made to simplify the computation. Lastly, we have this uh, lower portion of a steel column in where due to this 12,000 pound apply force on the column, the reaction of the ground is idealized to be linearly distributed as shown. Disregarding any possible irregularities in the distribution. This kind of idealization serves as a great tool to be used when designing structure. Now that we have reviewed what is dynamics and its two areas, and also the idealizations in mechanics, let's dissect the very essence of dynamics, which is motion, in the next part of this lecture. So that's it for now. Thank you and God bless.